Hey, so I'm going to show how to replace a USB port on the MacBook Air from 2014. Recently, my left side USB port near the power plug died. The right one still works fine, but I wanted to sell this one, so I want to get a little bit more money out of it, replace the part myself. Um, I'm lucky because it went on the left side, and that's just a small little circuit board, whereas the right side plug goes into the rest of the motherboard, and you'd have to replace the whole thing, which is going to be much more expensive. So essentially what went wrong is there are these tiny little pins near the top that hold the USB in place through these little pins right here, these little holes. And those got pressed up and pressed back down. Funny, I don't even know how. And essentially they're bent. I tried bending them back. It's too difficult. So bought this part online for about $12 um, before shipping. You probably find it for like 20 or 30 if you're going to go somewhere in the States. And you're going to need two Torx screwdrivers, different sizes, one size to get into the MacBook through all these different little screws. And the second size Torx is for the, the inside screws that hold this small little board that's already in there in place. You also need a anti-static wrist strap and you're gonna need little, something to pry up little cables with. And that's it. Next you're gonna wanna shut down your computer take off all the pentalobe screws, remove the bottom of the MacBook Air, then you're going to want to put on your anti-static wrist strap and attach it to a part of the case to ground it. Okay, here we got the part. I'm going to show you where it's at. First step on the inside is to remove the screw from the fan to the rest of the I.O. board. I accidentally stripped mine because I used the wrong size torque screw. Next thing to do is to remove the ribbon cable from the I.O. board to the motherboard. The next step is to remove this other cable coming out. You want to pry it from the bottom, you don't want to pull it. So as you can see here, I'm going to be pulling it up from the bottom. All right, the next thing to do is remove this torque screw. I'm going to hit it a couple times. It's threaded with some Loctite, so by hitting it a few times, you can kind of maybe break that up before removing the screw, and then you don't strip the screw. All right, just gonna remove the other side of the ribbon cable. And here's another cable we have to remove. This one I just kind of wedged my little tool between it and separated it. Now we're gonna move on to this ribbon cable. These are pretty delicate, so you wanna be careful. These are pretty delicate, so you wanna be careful. I just ended up using my fingers, but you wanna start with removing that piece of tape and then in the back you want to flip up onto the pins and that way you can slide out the ribbon cable. So the next thing to do is to remove the old I.O. board. I recommend you take off the entire fan but I was having trouble with getting some of the screws out and so I decided to kind of muscle it out but it would be much easier if you just removed the entire fan. To do that, you just remove two more screws, one on the other side and then one towards the back of the fan. Now we put everything back together and slide the ribbon cable in place and lower the pressure point on all the pins. Slide this connector back into place. And we put the ribbon cable on the top, bridging the motherboard and the I.O. board. Put on the Torx bolt. Press down the other side. And we have one more Torx going into where the fan was at. And that's it. Okay, let's plug it in and see if it works.